Windows XP. You may think it's dead now, decades after release and nobody's using it, but you might be wrong. Believe it or not, Windows XP still has about half a percent market share from all the Windows machines, which could equate to millions of machines that are still running Windows XP. Now that got me thinking, that got me really curious, is like, what the experience gonna be like? Can you still daily drive Windows XP? Can you use it in 2022 in any uh, proper modern way? And the first question gonna come to your mind is why? Why would anyone still use this ancient operating system? Isn't it dead already? And the answer is really simple. Most people just didn't bother upgrading. And this is especially true if you have like an offline machine. Let's say if you have a, a factory that's built in the early 2000s and you needed a piece of software to automate your machines and to run your machines. And your software will run fine on Windows XP. And ever since it's been working fine, you never need an update, you never need an upgrade, and uh, it just never broke. So since this machine is offline, there is no any security risk. So why even bother upgrading when it just works fine? The second category of people that's still running Windows XP are people with really, really old computers. Since Windows XP is so light, it's actually lighter than many Linux distros, believe it or not. And it supports really ancient hardware. I'll actually show you how light it runs. So if your grandpa's on a PC from the early 2000s and he only used to use a PC to like check the news, your grandpa's not gonna bother trying to learn Linux and trying to start on their ancient PC. Now I gotta make one thing clear. It's definitely a sketch trying to run this thing online. Because I promise you, if someone sneezes on it, you're going to catch a malware. It's not secure, it's source code got leaked, it hasn't received any security updates in fucking years. It's pretty much as unsecure as you can get if you want to use something online. So, if you want to try this just for the memes or the nostalgia, don't ever have any personal data. You either run it on a virtual machine or run it on a machine that does not have any personal data that you don't want it to be leaked or ransomed. So with that being said, I think it's still interesting to look at it. I think it's still interesting to see what the experience is gonna be like. Now enough rambling, and let's go on with it. We got a machine here. Let me just make sure this is full screen. The resolution here is definitely gonna be really jank. Don't mind that, I'll fix that once it's installed. I think, if I remember correctly, this is the last Windows operating system that um, did not have a GUI. It did not have a graphical interface where you could actually have it use your mouse and you know, that was pretty quick. So I'm gonna name this Bill. All right, and where we go? Let me just uh, move this down there. One thing I noticed immediately is the low resolution wallpaper. Holy shit. This looked a lot better in my head than what it actually looks. Actually, now I want to take a look at the other wallpapers. Oh, oh boy, <laughs> stretch it. Yeah. The best part is none of these were made with widescreen in mind. They're all made for like uh, 4x3. So nostalgic looking at these. Now I believe you, online you can find like a AI upscale version of this. Uh, it's a lot better. But I'm still like quite shocked of how low resolution this looks now you look at it from an authentic Windows XP. <laughs> Imagine back in the day some graphic designer created this and Microsoft paid for it. And we thought it was cool back in the day. How? I don't know, don't ask me. Like, it looks fine if you just go far away and you look at it from there. And go, oh yeah, that looks good. That looks nostalgic. God damn. And then you get a little closer and then like, ooh. Bro, we used to look at this shit when we were younger and I used to like think, wow, this is actually cool. So remember when I told you this operating system is extremely lightweight to run? I will show you. Task Manager. So it's using less than a hundred megabytes of RAM, including the page file. That's the entire memory pool. Even though I gave it eight gigabytes of RAM, it's using less than a hundred. Now to put that into perspective, Windows 10 or Windows 11 will use about two gigabytes, one and a half. Depends on how much RAM you have, but usually you will chill out one and a half idle, doing nothing with nothing installed. Linux, um, let's say Debian, anywhere from 500 to like 800 megabytes. A more lighter distros will be between the 200 to 400 range, but a hundred megabytes of memory usage is more like Raspberry Pi territory of memory usage. So that's just to put it in perspective. Your phone probably uses more memory than that. Also, it's very light by size. So if we take a look at disk usage, we see we are only use, using 3.7 gigabytes. Now again, to put this into perspective, uh, Windows 10 and 11, they use about 20 gigabytes. 25 depends on how many updates there is and how many updates it did not delete. Android and iOS will use somewhere around 15 gigabytes. 10 to 15 gigabytes depends on the version. So by size, this is like what? Four times lighter than a phone operating system? So anyways, let's try to actually use the damn thing. The first problem I'm gonna run into, uh, your browser's not gonna work. It's just not gonna work. It's outdated. Um, pretty much almost every major browser has stopped supporting this. Or the only sites we can use on this ancient browser is unsecured sites. We have to use HTTP. And many sites don't even let you use HTTP anymore. 
Um, so we have to upgrade to a usable browser. So this is one of the last browsers that still support Windows XP and still continues to be updated. As you can see, we connected to the site using HTTP, not HTTPS. And the reason they support HTTP as well as HTTPS is because they, you know, they want to still support Windows XP. So they still want you to have access to it. Save it, desktop, run it. So at least this will get us connected to the web. Now we can use HTTPS, now we can go wherever. So how is the web experience like? Can we check YouTube? And yeah, it works pretty nice. It's doing, you know, pretty good, I would say. I would say it's usable for browsing. You know, I expect it to work because this browser is built for Windows XP. How about we try something more challenging? Let's try anything modern. Let's try um, I don't know, Creative Cloud. There is no any way this thing is going on. Well, let's download it. All right. All right, all right. Ah, no. All right. How about... Um, hmm. How about Steam? Can we just get Steam running on this thing? It installed, but... It says not a valid application, which is expected. Let's try a media player. Let's try VLC. I wonder if they, you know, if it's just a runs. Nope, VLC does not run. About one run. Nope. All right. So what's happening here? Since Windows Vista. Microsoft has changed a lot of the infrastructure and the way Windows worked. Because there was a big difference between Windows Vista and Windows XP in terms of infrastructure and the base code, uh, a lot, there was a lot of compatibility issues with drivers and software. In order for people to get stuff to work on Windows Vista, they had to write it on purpose to work with Windows Vista. So now we are in the same zone. If you want anything to run on Windows XP, you have to get it specifically coded to run on Windows XP. So for example, the browser runs okay because it was coded to run on Windows XP. All this software, Steam, uh, Creative Cloud, WinRAR, DaVinci, it's not gonna run because it's not coded to run on Windows XP because the backbone of the operating system is so different. So does that mean it's completely dead? Well, no. For example, if we download the recent WinRAR version, it's not gonna run because it's not coded to run on Windows XP. If we download all the version, like this one, it should work just fine. Like there is no any reason for it not to work. So now we have WinRAR running and it works, you know, just fine, like WinRAR. And speaking of the programs that are specifically made for Windows XP, there is actually an antivirus that still supports Windows XP. To my surprise, Avast still supports Windows XP for some reason. Like I wonder, is there enough Windows XP machines that are using Avast to justify having developers continuously working on uh, an antivirus for Windows XP. All right, gave me an error here, but I think it's fixed. I think this is either .NET Framework or Microsoft Redis Redistributor. All right, if this doesn't fix it, I'm not gonna bother trying. Oh, it did fix it, I knew it. That's probably .NET Framework. So now we got all the dependencies installed. This, this installed just fine and it should work just fine. So if you wanna get your Grandma's PC a bit secure, then that might work. Although I really doubt it's gonna help that much. So from usability standpoint, I will say you can use it if you really try hard. To be honest, there is ways, for example, to like run Steam and more modern software on Windows XP, but then it requires you to be a bit nerdy. And even if you run that software, I will not recommend running it on Windows XP because it's called expose your personal information such as your emails and possibly even your passwords. All right, so I think that's it for me with this operating system. I think we can safely say it's pretty much unusable. It's just an ancient history piece that's nice to look at. It's nice to mess around with it and, you know, remember all the good old days, the glory of Windows XP. So that's it for me. I'm going to end it here on Spider Solitaire. So hopefully this was somewhat entertaining for you to watch. And I hope you're going to have a wonderful day. See you.